Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to please join me in prayer as we consider Christ our leader. Heavenly Father, I do give thanks to you for blessing us with this day that we have to come together in your name, to come together in your house to worship you and praise your holy name. I pray that as we do consider your, your leadership in our lives, that we would each and every day seek your leadership, that we would seek you in times of trouble, that we would seek you in times of joy, that in all times we would know that you are there. May your word be a guide for us. May it be a path and a light for our, light for our paths. This we pray through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. There's a song uh, that some of you probably know, some of you may not. It's about 10 years old now. and It was sung by Carrie Underwood, and it was uh, one of her debut songs. If you were familiar with the show American Idol, it was one of the songs that she sang on there. And then as she was releasing her first songs, it was called Jesus Take the Wheel. Has anybody heard that song before? Jesus Take the Wheel. And even if you've not heard the song, let me tell you just a little bit about it so you know what was going on there. There's this young mother who's driving along at night, night presumably uh, Carrie Underwood herself, who knows, probably not though, because there was a baby in the back seat as she was driving along. She was driving through snow and ice. Now, I know you're not familiar with snow and ice, but that's a fairly dangerous uh, uh, time to travel. And as she was driving along, we're, through the song, we're invited into her thoughts. We're invited into her thoughts about how hectic her life has been, how awful her life has been, and how many times she just feels like giving up. Well, suddenly we're jolted back to reality. As she loses control of her car, she hits a patch of ice, and she goes sliding, spinning. She lets go of the wheel. And she says, Jesus, take the wheel. She utters that prayer. Suddenly, her car comes to a stop on the shoulder of the road. Both her and her baby are safe. And from that day forward, she gives her life over to Christ that Jesus may take the wheel of her life. Now, I know many of you have not driven on snow and ice, but perhaps you can imagine that same idea. If you remember back a few years ago now, but if I, if I have it right, there were crickets that infested this entire valley. So much so that when you would stop your car, it would keep sliding and you would not be in control because there were so many crickets on the ground. You were out of control. Even if you've not driven on ice, you know what it means to be out of control. But not just in a vehicle, not just driving your car, but even more than that, you understand what it's like to be out of control in your lives. You know what it's like to put together the greatest plans, the best laid plans of mice and men off go awry? You know what it's like to have ideas and ideals for your future, plans for what you're going to do in your retirement, plans for what you're going to do next year. And you know how quickly those plans fail, how quickly those plans churn, how quickly you lose control. And you may not say, Jesus, take the wheel, but you might say, oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Jesus, please save me. Have any of you been in a situation like that? Maybe you're in a situation like that right now where nothing in your life seems to be going the way you intended it to, where nothing in your life as you planned it seems to be going right. You finally have your finances in order. And you found out that you lost your job. Things are out of control. You start a conversation with your family thinking that things are finally turning around, talking about important issues. And before you know it, things get out of control. People are shouting at one another, screaming at one another, blaming one another, instead of talking to one another. Maybe you know this in your health. You've eaten well all your life. You've looked after your body. You've, you've not eaten too much sugar or too many fats. And you go to the doctor for your regular checkup. And he says those words, it's cancer. Things are out of control. It seems like so many times in our lives, we go through these experiences where our lives get out of control out of our control, which in truth it never really was in our control. But even worse in those times in our, our lives, our regular, our earthly lives, it's our spiritual lives. Those times when we, we listen to, we come to worship and we listen to the words that are read and the words that are preached, but they don't seem to resonate with us. Those times when we sing the hymns or sing our Christian songs, but they seem like empty words, words for someone who, someone who's got it all together. We get down on our knees for prayer, but our prayers seem to be lost, like we are. 
all of us at some time or another goes through these times where we're out of control, where we're not in control of our lives, where, where things slip and slide and all we can do is let go. You know, the beautiful thing about this and that many of you know is that we aren't in control. Yeah, our sinful pride, it, it, may, it leads us to believe that we have everything in order, that we're in control. But it's, the beautiful thing is that we're not. That God is the one who's always in control. God is the one who's always in control of our world, of our lives. He is the one who's always there. And even in the midst of those worst trials of our lives, when things seem out of our control, God is there. And he is with you. You know, a lot of people, they think that when they come to the end of their rope, that's where God is. Well, God is right there alongside us on the rope. It's not as though he waits to just save us and put his hand out at the last minute, but he is constantly there with you each and every day. God is there with you when you're going through the worst times of your life and when you're going through the best times of your life. God is with you when things seem to be falling into place for you as though, as though you had planned it. God is with you when things seem out of control, where things are sliding beyond your reach. Now, I know that many of you know this, but even, even non-Christians know this, that, that in those times they seek God even if for only a short while. But we've learned, many of you have learned, that no matter where you are in life, that that is what is necessary. That in those times, that that's when we fall to our knees, that is when we pray the most, that is when we're in God's Word more than ever. And you know that. I think you do. You know that God is with you. We're even given the promise that Jesus is our intercessor, that, that even when we can't speak those words, the Holy Spirit is speaking those words for us. You've been down on your knees before in prayer, maybe not literally, but figuratively, sobbing, crying out, maybe even breathless, not able to speak. And the Lord is there. And I thank the Lord that many of you know that He is there. That He's there with you, that He is there, who's the, He is the one bringing you peace. Now a lot of folks, they, they turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and during these times, and sometimes, they, well, a very comforting verse, but I think we need to make sure we understand it right. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, Paul says, No temptation has seized you, except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out for you that you can stand up under it. God is with you even in the midst of those trials and he is the one who is carrying you through. But so often we read that verse and we think, see, God won't let me be tempted too far. He won't let me get dr drug out too far. But I think that's wrong. What, what Paul's saying here is not that we're going to be, not that we aren't going to experience these trials, that we aren't going to be stretched, but rather God is going to be the one who stretches us. He's going to push us so that we might be strengthened in our faith. He's going to push us in these times so that we might draw closer to Him. These times are painful, but these times are also times where He works on our hearts and He works in our lives and He stretches us and He pushes us. And yes, we will get to the end of our ropes, but we will not be alone there at the end of the rope. But He will be the one who gives us strength to get through. James kind of wraps it up really nice in James chapter 1. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. God doesn't just randomly put us through these trials, these realizations that we are not in control, but he uses these to strengthen our faith. He uses these times and these trials to draw us closer to Him so that we might cling to Him and we might realize that we are not in control of our lives. And the truth is, though, many of us know that Christ is our leader in these times. But what about when times are good? What about when times are going our way? When the sun is shining, metaphorically speaking, on us? What about those times? It's easy for our pride to get in the way in those times when we, when we look at ourselves and we pat ourselves on the back and we say, way to go, good job, way to financially handle things well, way to look after my health really well. We get all proud of ourselves. But the truth is, even in those times, God wants to be our leader. God wants to be our guide. He wants us to let go and stop trying to lead our own lives. 
That may sound like an oxymoron in the world we live in today because so often in our world we do talk about the need to be autonomous, the need to be strong, the need to be bold, the need to walk on our own. But God says no. No, instead, give it over to me. Let go of your life and hand it over to me because I know what is better for you. I know what is good for you. I am the guide who is not only walking with you now, but I have seen the end. I have seen all the way to the very end. And he wants us to cling to him, to clutch, to let go of what we are holding on to and to instead cling to our faith. He doesn't do this because he wants us to feel like we owe him something. But he does this because he's our heavenly father who loves us who is our leader each and every day. He's our Heavenly Father who holds us in the palm of His hand, who wants what is best for us, who wants us to know His mercies new each day, who wants us to know that as we walk, we never walk alone, but He is always there with us. That as often as we lift up our prayers to Him, we can never lift up our prayers too many times. I've heard people say that, well, won't I annoy God? Isn't there a chance that He'll get tired of listening to me? No! God wants you to bend his ear every moment of every day. He wants you to be in a regular, daily, minutely, hourly relationship with him. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, pray without ceasing. Keep talking to God. Don't let your time go in between because you constantly need to hear the voice of your Lord, the comfort of your Savior as you walk each day and each way. Whether you're going through good times or bad, God wants to be your guide. Whether you're going through happy times or sad times, God wants to fill you with true joy and true peace. You know, in, in uh, uh, C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity, he's got a quote in there. It's pretty early in the book, page 50. And he says that, that we, cannot, we cannot have peace and joy without God. We cannot have true happiness without God. And I'm paraphrasing a bit, but maybe if you have a copy or if you need a copy, let me know. Because if you read through this book, Mere Christianity, he talks about that gift of faith, that gift of promise that we have, that, that we have through our Lord. And that gift of faith and promise is the gift of true joy and peace. True joy and peace the world cannot give us. Sure, we can seek happiness, we can seek gladness all over the place in the world, but none of these places will ever bring us true joy and peace as walking with our God as waking up in the morning in His name, as going to sleep at night in His Word. That is a beautiful gift that our God has given us, a beautiful gift that He gives us for each and every day. Not only does He lead us in the times of trial, the times where we feel like we're in control, but He leads us in all times. You know, that's one of the beautiful things. And, and He promises, He promises us this peace. He promises that when we turn these things over to Him, when we let go of these things and stop living in our pride, that He will bless us. And don't take my word for it. Let me share you, share His word. His word. And, and just in case you know, this verse isn't enough, with this, this is from Jeremiah chapter 29. Go to the psalmist, Psalms. See how many times the psalmist celebrates the gifts of God. But let me read you this verse because it's so clear how God is going to bless his people. It's so clear how he blessed his people of old, how he blesses us today. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The plans God has for each one of your lives is to bless you, to give you joy and to give you his peace. That is not my promise. That is his promise. His promise found in the world. Word. And yes, he gave it to, through a prophet, Jeremiah, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. But in that promise he gave Jeremiah through, to his, through Jeremiah to his people, it still rings true to us today. God promises us that when we turn our lives over to Him, when we stop being the leaders of our lives, that He will bless us in ways we don't even, can't even imagine. That he will give us a peace that we cannot measure. That He will give us true joy. Not empty joy which seems to pass away as fast as it comes, but true joy in Him. True joy in knowing that this is not all there is but that we do have a promise. A promise that one day we will know eternal life. Not eternal death, but eternal joy and life with our Savior. That is the true joy that Christians have today and every day. The true joy that our Savior walks with us, that He is our lead, leader and our guide to the day that we, to tell the day that we join Him in eternity. 
May God fill your hearts with that joy, knowing that whether your life is out of control, he is in control. Whether your life seems to be going in well, he is still in control. And may you turn over to God all that holds you back, so that you may know his true joy, his true peace. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would guide and direct us through all the trials of our lives, the difficult times, but also through the joyful times. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us your word as a testimony, as a guide for our lives, as a guide for our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us your spirit who walks with us, who leads us each and every day. And we pray that we would put aside our pride and just let go. Let go and give things over to you not just in times of trial, but in all times. Lord, show us your mercies and show us your blessings. Show us your joys and your true peace. The true peace that comes in not being the ones in control, but knowing you are in control. And so it is in Jesus, our Savior, we pray. The, the, our promised salvation, that all things we pray through Jesus' name. Amen.